The major storylines regarding the Rams this season have been about what's going on on the sidelines. Is it Jared Goff not playing? And now it has to do with the beef between Jeff Fisher and Eric Dickerson. Let me explain. In an interview with ESPN, Dickerson said that Fisher essentially told him he didn't want him on the sidelines during games because of some of his public comments that have made his players uncomfortable. Dickerson said, I won't be at the Coliseum as long as Fisher is coaching. I'm a man of my word. And if I tell you something, I'm gonna do it. Fisher had this to say about Dickerson not feeling welcome. I'd welcome him into the building. I'd love to have him come in. I'd love to have him come to practice. I'd love to have him come in the meetings. <laughs> Max, I'm lost. Who do you believe? I believe Eric Dickerson. Why would he make it up? And this doesn't make any sense. And then and, and this is what the team underestimated. Yeah, you're the Rams. You're talking about the greatest player in your franchise's history who was a Los Angeles Ram. These guys just got here from St. Louis. So when the greatest Los Angeles Ram is sitting, what? He would just make it up? No, they underestimated his juice. They didn't think he would go public, it seems to me. Eric Dickerson said, oh, okay, this is how you treat me? This is what happened? And now the Rams are in spin mode. No, 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 of course, of course Eric Dickerson is, is welcome here. a little sensitive to me. Who are they to tell Eric Dickerson because he justifiably criticizes a terrible team not to be on the sidelines? Shame on them. Well, I, I agree. Uh, I know Eric personally. Uh, spent a little time in Los Angeles with the Rams. Uh, he was a, te was a teammate. He's a good man. And uh, if he said something, he has a radio show, obviously. And if players are sensitive to that, uh, that, that, that tells me something about this football team. In other words, when the media people after the game come into the locker room, the same people that write things about you, the same people on the radio, they come, that's okay, but Eric Dickerson can't stand on, t on the sideline, a Hall of Famer, uh, one of the best running backs to ever play the game of football because he said something negative about you. He can't go there. And Jeff can't win this battle. Je Jeff needs to stay out of it. I, I think he, he said what he said. He needed to say that. Welcome Eric back. Knowing Eric, he's not coming back. Because Eric's a man of his word. If he's not coming back, if he's a coach, he's not coming back, okay? But this got out of control. It should never <laughs> got to this point. If you're the head coach, one thing you don't listen to is players in the locker room talking about the media people. You, you got to deal with the media people. That, that's part of it. And you can't win that battle. When you go down that road as a coach, you're done. Go ahead. Finish. You got the floor. Big Finish. Jeff Fisher fan, we know. Go right ahead. To me, y'all missing a point. <laughs> y'all missing a point. Let me look into the camera and say this. Congratulations to the Los Angeles Rams organization. You now have a great reason to get rid of Fisher right now. This man is horrible. Period. This is going on the seventh year. He is not going to have a winning record. This is his 22nd year in the NFL as a head coach. This man has made the playoffs six times. He has not had a winning record since 2008. Back then, Max, people actually joked I had as much hair as you. That's how long ago that was that this man recorded a winning record. Not only do you get one contract after another after another, but then they relocate to Los Angeles from St. Louis to La La Sunshine. Didn't Jeff Fisher go to USC? I think he did. So you back in home turf, home territory, Southern California, Sunshine, Rodeo Drive, Venice Beach, Palm Trees. How in the hell did he pull this off? Gronky is the coach. Isn't he the owner of this team? Isn't Gronky? Yeah, he got, yeah. he got pictures on this man or something. Something's up. He got something on this dude. How in the hell is Jeff Fisher, uh, 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 still a coach of the Los Angeles Rams, and then knowing all of this, because he knew before this incident, he knew before this incident he had had a winning record since 2008, he knew before this incident he only had six playoff appearances, he knew his level of ineptitude was incredibly alarming, wasting away the career of Todd Gurley, Tavon Austin, got Case Keenum as your quarterback, when you drafted Jared Goff, you should have drafted Carson Wentz, we know all of this, but knowing all of that? You still turn around and talk smack to Eric Dickerson? And by the way, Eric, Eric hold on, by the way, Eric Dickerson did not say he heard it from somebody else. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on. He did not say that he heard it from somebody else. He said Jeff Fisher said it directly to him. And Jeff Fisher initially tried to deny that. You can't make this up. This dude need to get the hell out of hell. Let me look at my man, Bill Plasky, one of the voices, the ultimate voices, Los Angeles Times. Bill Plasky, one of the great columnists. You know, 
Get this man out of town. Get this man. Marcellus Wally, your radio host, oh, no, dog. No, you a no, football no. player. You know what you're doing. Get this man out of town. You know, Scott McCarthy runs ESPN LA. Find a way. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. These be- I met these people for the Los Angeles Rams. These are good people. They got a lot of good people within that organization. Your coach, he's got to go. He's got to go. He's got to go. Fisher, bah. Please, Eric Dickerson's not coming back. Please, who the hell do you think you are? He got to go. He got to go, <laughs> man. Why you got Jordan is not welcome on the sidelines for the Bulls? <laughs> what? I mean, please. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be kidding Yankee me. State, I, I, I just want to know. Listen, Don King Kobe, says it all the time. Don King says it all the time, only in America. Jeff Fisher needs to adopt that mentality. How the hell is this man have a head coach job in the NFL? Coach, how? How is it, man, man, you've been, how, how long you been away from the game as a head coach? Oh, eight I'm, years. Now, the damn, hire you, man. I mean, go back, <laughs> good. man. Yeah, this, good this, job. I'm just, I'm, coach, no, ain't no job better than that. What kind? Listen, I want that job. That's security. You can be that and have to still keep a head coach a job? How? How? What has Fisher done to keep, say, keep getting these contract extensions? He got pitches on the man. So, so wrong. So wrong. I so think, wrong. I, I think Eric's going to go back to the new stadium. When they have the new stadium, Eric's going to go back to that stadium. Yeah, it, He's it, waiting for the new stadium. Yeah. You don't, you don't show up and in L.A. and the first thing alienate Eric Dickerson. Eric, but Eric in the is real. Of a terrible I season. know Eric, too. Eric's one more. Eric's cool people, man. Eric's real. If he, meant, if he says something, he means it. He was offended by what this man said. And he's quoting him. Who do you think you are? I cannot believe Just for this. the record, where do you stand on Jeff Fisher? Yeah. So clear. We're trying to get is Steven that, Is, that, is that almost like saying Kobe Bryant can't go to Laker game? Right. Yes, yes. Oh. Yes. Kobe, Jeter can't now, go to Yankee Stadium. That's not good. Term. Cal Ripken Thanks. can't go to Baltimore. Thanks for being here. Thanks for Jeff being out of the, be- the best You're okay, Jeff Fisher. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, Listen, I, 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 get my pipe and some water. Musa. I don't know Jeff Fisher from a can of paint. I don't know the man. I've only met him a couple of times. All I'm saying to you is I'm addressing his record. Mm. If you have a guy like that in his position, what excuse is there to fire anybody else anywhere? Everybody else might as well keep their job no matter how inept they are. 22 years and six playoff appearances in 22 years, not a winning record. I ain't saying no playoffs. Not a winning yeah. record since 2008. He has the second most career and, regular oh, season losses. And by the way, and this yeah. in the middle in of the NFL season history. where they traded what? all that to go he up to draft He has the second Jared most Goff. regular season losses in NFL the history. The second most NFL losses, losses in NFL history. And you st- and he just got a contract extension. You can't make this right. up. You right. can't. I right. want that job. We security. Need, we need you, security. We need you to I need down, security. How does this man have a job? We'll see you again oh, soon. We may have already seen the best out of tight end Rob Gronkowski in his career. This is not an overreaction for me. And kind of sad to say it because he's so fun to watch. The health is just, it's undeniable. It's the way I he mean, plays. It's like, and not only is it the way he plays, but it's also the way guys are forced to tackle him. Mm-hmm. I think the way he plays and how he has to be contacted now by defenders, it makes it impossible to be sustainable now. That was Timmy Assel back on NFL Live saying that Rob Gronkowski, excuse me, Gronkowski's best days are behind him after suffering a back injury in Sunday's win over the Jets. Herm Edwards just in that clip on NFL Live and now here with us. Good to see you as Good to always. be back. I haven't been here in a while. Happy yeah. holidays. Always happy, happy to have you. Always, always, happy, to have always you. happy to have always you. Doing great, great work. I'm watching you every Sunday night with Boomer. Always. Keep it up, my man. I love <laughs> it. It ain't too many people that can sit in that seat that Tom Jackson <laughs> occupied for so many years. Well, it's man. good to Not see the you. the right guy in it, though. Absolutely. No question. You think he's right? I do. I think Gronk, ha- listen, Gronk's best season was 2011. I mean, let's just be honest about what it is. That was his best season. That's a long time ago already. There are certain players, and I, I know t- apologies to Tony Gonzalez. Mm. If I had to pick a tight end that I've seen with my own eyes to be on my all-time team, I want Gronkowski. And, and, but guys who are big and strong and, and have a rough and tumble style, I think Earl Campbell, for example, can be like the best player in the league for three or four years, but they generally don't have very long primes. It is a brutal, coach, I don't have to tell you, sport that takes its toll. Um, and Gronkowski's health has always been an issue. Last several years, you know, like how often are you not worried that Gronkowski is going to be compromised in some way heading into the playoffs? Because when he's not, they're a legit Super Bowl threat. I mean, they may win the Super Bowl. Right. And when he is, there's something less. I do agree. It's caught up with him. He'll still be excellent. Not what he once was. I agree with that. I just like I just don't like what Tim Hasselbeck left out. He's right. The key point that he made was that 
it's a combination of the injuries, but more importantly, how you're forced to tackle him. Mm. Right. And yep. that's the part that I peel from Tim Hasselback and what he said more than anything else. And when he said that statement, then it had me thinking about that damn NFL. This is all their fault because they're so fixated on avoiding the concussions. They've encouraged folks to hit low. And then you can I've seen guys cave a dude's chest in. But because the head snaps back, they're getting fined for it because, you know, the guy ends up getting concussed because of how he falls on the turf or whatever the case may be. And so as a result, you're forcing guys to hit low because they don't want money coming out of their pockets because this ain't the NBA with the, the eight high eight figures, nine figures, guaranteed salaries from time to time. So these guys trying to keep money in their pocket. So what are they doing? They're going after your knees. They're going after lower than that. And then you combine all of that with Gronk being in about 6'6", six, six, about 250 plus or whatever the case may be, and you can't tackle him in the upper body and bring him down, you're forced to go low because that league itself has encouraged you to go low. Now, I would tell you this. If somehow, some way, I also look at Bill Belichick and some of the routes you got him running, Tom Brady throwing the ball high because height is to his advantage, makes him an easier target instead of throwing the ball a little bit low so he can go down a little bit, just a little bit and get it because it could save his legs a little bit. I'm sure Tom Brady's not doing that on purpose, but it is what it is. All of those things factor into the equation. But for my money, you talk about Gronk. I listen, I'm a huge fan of Tony Gonzalez. By the way, he's doing a good job on CBS. I know my man is at the other network. But I love me some Shannon Sharp. Yep. I love me some yep. Shannon Sharp could be my tight end any day of the week. And, yeah, and, and Coach, this is going to hit home for you, particularly where you live. You know where I'm going. Mm. I don't know too many tight ends in history that I love more than I love me some Kellen Winslow. Mm. When you talk That's about true. Kellen Winslow with Dan Fouts and Charlie joining up, Chuck Muncy out of the backfield, to go, I mean, you talking something special with that offense. So, I mean, Winslow, Sharp. Gonzalez, Gronk. Now, I might not know about the dit because I wasn't right. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm 49. Okay, I'm not 69. I ain't seen much of Mike Ditka, all right? I mean, uh, Jackie Smith, wasn't he the one that dropped the yeah, touchdown no, no, against yeah, the Steelers in the Super Bowl? Hit him right in the chest. But, him, I, but I don't know. Well, Jason Witt's going to be in there. Antonio Gates might be in there. But my top four tight ends, we talking Shannon Sharp. We talking Kellen Winslow, all right? We're talking Gonzalez. We're talking Gronk. Yeah, you guys make great points, and I think a couple things uh, to, to add on to this. The evolution of the passing game has, has changed as well. I mean, when you think about the use of formations anymore and where quarterbacks are now willing to throw the football. It used to be the ball was thrown on the perimeter outside the numbers, mm -hmm. probably 70 to 80 percent of the time. That's no longer the case. The ball is thrown 70 80 percent of the time now inside the numbers, and so this is where for the most part, Gronk lives. He lives inside the numbers. He's a big catching tight end. Quarterbacks are more uh, prone now to throw it inside to take advantage of the coverage you have inside. Safeties, linebackers trying to cover an athletic tight end, the matchup is in your favor. And Stephen A. Uh, put it very well in the fact that the rules have changed, where guys have to go low to hit a guy like this. And the other thing about Gronk, when you watch him play, and you mentioned a bunch of good tight ends, he's a clumsy athlete. I call him a clumsy athlete. In other words, when he gets tackled, watch how he falls. Falls hard. Like, it's almost like a, you know, it, if you had a bag and you put a bag of bricks in one bag and you put marshmallows in the other bag and you drop them, Gronk's the one with the, with the bricks. It, boom, it always hits hard. Where some guys, when they get tackled, it's the marshmallows. They just fall down. Mm -hmm. They just kind of fall and they get up. He falls hard. Every time he gets tackled, it's just... That, that, that's true, but let me ask you this question, oh. Coach. I get you. I totally understand that. You're absolutely right, but let me ask you this. The reason why I bring up the NFL, and Max, you too, we do so much, the league meaning. Mm, yes. You protect the quarterbacks. Sure. How about protecting your tight ends? How about protecting those offensive players when we, if we're of the mindset, as much as we love the game of football, if we're of the mindset that offense sells... Whereas you don't, with, pit, with, 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 with baseball, you want, you want the long ball if you, if you could help it. Where with basketball, you don't want the hand checking. You're not allowed to do it because you don't want to take so much away. You don't want the bad boy pisses. You don't want the rough riders that were the New York Knicks with Anthony Mason, God rest his soul, and Ewan and Oakley and those boys. You want a more offensive flow. The Golden State Warriors are a dream come true for the NBA. How come the same isn't applicable in football overall where we're talking about the quarterbacks being protected, but not necessarily all the offensive elite players? Well, and to a sense there is because according to how you hit a guy, right. all of a sudden it's a foul. 
I mean, right. we've seen guys get hit where, it's, where, where when you're a defensive player now and you hit a guy right. and he's and he's not aware of him getting ready to get hit, it's almost like what, they're going to call a foul on me or not. So they're trying to do it, but it's still a contact just sport. Like you man, just like you mandate avoiding the head, yes. I think you should mandate hitting above the knees, man. Here's, the, really here's the problem. Here's you what should we're try really, it. Here's, yeah, what you you're really, try it. here's what you're really addressing. This right. is not flag football. This is tackle football. Right. Yes. And the tackling comes from the defense. That's why it's tackle football. They're trying to stop you. They're trying to tackle you. And tackle football is brutal and has been, as, as has been brought up recently, if you tried to invent it today, it wouldn't take because people would be like, that's too barbaric. You can't do that. So as time goes on and the, and the health of the players, especially post-career, becomes a bigger and bigger issue, it will resemble less of the tackle football we now know. And I think people are going to have to get used to that idea, Coach, although I know old school guys like you aren't going to love it. Well, we say that, but, but I still think we are a, a culture of competitive violence within the framework of rules. Now, you're a big boxing guy, and you're one of them MAA guys. You watch those people fight? No doubt about and it. And people, people want to watch that. But you know what, Coach? It, they want to watch that. They, they do, but bring up boxing. Boxing has been increasingly marginalized through the years, partly because of its brutality. Yes. And MMA, because of the way it's regulated, there have been fewer, and it's also a young sport, long-term kind of health problems associated with it. And I think that's one of the reasons, because as soon as you get an advantage, you can end the fight. Sure. Th that's one of the reasons it's a fast-growing sport. Well, I will tell you this. Oh, I don't think you're the one to make the argument today because you're going all the way out to Vegas and watch some dude axe man Nicholas Walters quit because oh he, oh, he, he quit. wasn't feel quit because oh, he wasn't feeling out. well. I got mean you gotta be kidding me. He tapped out. He, 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 he tapped out, coach. He said no more. He actually see, said no more. He and actually this said no more. This is why MMA. That? This is oh. why MMA is growing and boxing hasn't. That's been. right. One of the reasons you can tap out in MMA. It's not the end of your career. You fight another day. Boxing, you tap out. People call you a quitter. They never forget. That's right. Forgive you. And I'm and you're right because I ain't gonna forget Nicholas Walters. The less brutal the sport is in the long run, the more growth potential. When you kick a guy in the face with your foot, that's not, that's not. Yeah, but if, you, but if you hurt him, you, you get well, on the end of the fight. And then, so it's you very compare physical. that to football? It's very physical. Look, it's it's very physical. Very physical. Football is prolonged violence. Hey, yeah. Your sport is the one where they quit. We gotta, that's what we Nicholas gotta, Walters we gotta did. Stay with, we got to stay with this violent sport. Can't do this. All right. Can't tap out. Nicholas Coming up. Walters.